that got me to really going to places that I think are really, you know, have positive messages of community and like support. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what would you like your full name to be for the interview? How would you like to be identified? Maria Castro. Okay, Maria Castro. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, do you want to do a little sound check real quick? That's good to go. Okay. Were you checking it earlier? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Just give us up the thumbs up when you're ready. Uh, second thing you should do real quick though is take, use your phone as a secondary audio source. So record on your phone so you can transfer that. That layers the audio so that way you can have the best sounding quality you can. See, that's why, that's why I have this guy. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. And at any time you'd like to be like, oh, give me a second to think about it. Before you start answering, like, you know what, actually, I think this, that's totally okay because we can go back and edit it. Is it filming? Yeah. Okay. Good to go. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Maria Castro. Maria, how are you doing today? Doing good. Nice. And you work with the organization Puente. Yeah, Puente Human Rights. Puente Human Rights. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so when the Human Rights Movement was founded in the wake of the raids around uh, Maricopa County, so Maricopa County Sheriff Joram Pio um, was abusing his power um, and his authority and using immigration powers to essentially track down and attack our community um, in 2006 and 2007, um, putting raids all over our neighborhoods um, and deporting people. And so, out of the chaos and crisis, uh, Puente was formed. Um, it started off as a project and then became its own organization. And you're telling me that you've been a community organizer. You're a community organizer. You've been working. Um, you've been doing this work since you were 15, as because of the law SB 1070. Yeah. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about what that law is and how it's like impacted you in the community? Yeah. So Alec, which is the American Legislative Exchange Council. Um, help draft this bill, um, which is officially known as SB 1070. Um, it was brought to the Arizona legislature by Russell Pierce. What this law did was essentially um, legalize racial profiling um, and already gave more, more power and more audacity to a law enforcement that was rampant in our community. Um, and so this law, SB 1070, after it passed, um, I felt it was a direct attack on my family because I have family members who are undocumented. My mom um, is undocumented. And so for me as a 15-year-old child whose mom had been previously deported, it felt like they were going to take my mom away from me again. And so I started volunteering in different groups as a community organizer. And so you need to point the... What's So what is definitely like a home. A lot of us identify um, as family members with each other. Um, we're a very tight-knit community here. Um, I think some of the the things that that make us uh, make us stand out is that one, we're community-based. Um, not many organizations have actual base. Um, the other thing is that. Um, we make sure that our membership is well educated on the political side, understand what's going on, understand how to fight back, um, and we give them the space and the tools and the resources for them to be able to, one, defend themselves, and two, help defend the rest of the community together. Um, and so I think with that chemistry, with the people that are here, um, I think it allows us to be bold and courageous and creative when we're fighting Arizona is a very conservative place, more so than lots of people realize. Do you all ever um, face resistance from people? Do people ever come here like angry, like, oh, you should go back or anything like that? Do you face resistance within Arizona? Yeah, I think in order to understand how Arizona became an immigration epicenter, you have to understand Arizona as it was developing. Um, and so in the 80s, Arizona, 70s and 80s, Arizona was being promoted as this safe haven, come and enjoy the palm trees, There's the air is nice, and all of these great things. And at the same time, you were having the Clinton administration um, and the Bush administrations um, closing up the border um, and basically creating a funnel 
um, that would essentially lead people, instead of crossing the border in other places, um, have them cross through the Arizona desert. Um, Bill Clinton thought that the, the de one of the most deadliest deserts would be a deterrent enough to keep people away, but when you go and intentionally um, destroy the economy uh, of these other countries, people are forced to move. Um, and so with this funnel that was created, the border, people found themselves crossing one of the most de deadliest deserts um, that we've seen in, in recent history. Um, and so you find yourself with a bunch of old retirees from conservative states coming in, and then you have a younger population, um, a predominantly undocumented people coming in um, into the state. Um, so you get this, this cocktail, right, of, of experimentation that Alec and all these other project is um, it's about universal brotherhood you know coming together unity connection another way to word it I think might be why is it that um, people who are coming here from a different country receive so much hate and so I guess my question to you is as someone who's been in this work since 15 as someone who's so personally married and connected to it what do you think we have to do as people in Arizona in North America in the world to love each other more fully and what prevents us from doing you know, I think a lot of the times um, we fail to understand what is attacking us. Um, and it's once we understand what we're fighting up against, I think it's easier to understand our great love for each other. Uh, a lot of the times people say, you can't fight hate with hate, but it's on our end, it's not hate. It's, it's anger that stems from the great deep love that we have for each other. I'm angry because you are hurting the people that I love. Um, so when people say you can't fight hate with hate is a false equivalent. The hate that stems from ignorance and racism is not the same anger that I feel because of the love of my community. And so I think once we stop equating that and we identify what are the things that we're fighting against um, when it comes to like income inequality, um, policies that are designed to keep us behind bars, policies that allow police to kill us in the street once we're able to identify those things, I think it's easier for us to, to see the love in each other. Okay, well, Maria, I definitely see the love in you for the work that you're doing, and I think you so much for doing it. Good. That's good. That's good. Wow, that was such an insightful